Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today is lecture 7. I, in the previous lecture, uh, I will introduce in airport. Uh, so, in today's lecture, I will continue with the airport. So, today's contents are the parts of an aircraft. Actually, we call this as an aircraft characteristics. Parts of an aircraft, landing gear, turning radius, weight of an empty aircraft, weight of an aircraft, sorry, engine types and payload versus range curve. So why the characteristics are important? Because all these things are required for design of an airport weight, size, wheel configuration, capacity, and runway length. So if you look at the aircraft, you can divide the aircraft into four main parts. So the first, the body of an aircraft, the straight one, we call this as fuselage. Then there are wings, obviously there are engines, and there is a tail part, we also call this as empennage. Now what is a fuselage? Basic structure of an airport or of an airplane to which wings, empennage and ending gears are attached. It is designed to hold passengers, crews and cargoes. Empennage, I mean tail, it consists of a vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer. It provides the greatest stabilizing influence of all the components of an airplane. The engine, engine provides the thrust necessary for powered flights, a type of engine depends on the mission requirement of the airplane. Then there are wings. The wing is an airfoil attached to the fuselage and is designed to produce lift. It may contain fuel cells, engines and landing gears. Airplane control surfaces, aileron, flaps, slat and spoilers are also attached on it. Wings, straight wing used by small low speed aircraft, then that there is a sweep back wing used by most high speed aircraft, and there is a delta wing used by supersonic aircraft, and there is a swing wing as well. So wing can be in high, as you can see. Then there can be a mid wing and there is a low wing. The length of an aircraft is defined as the distance from the front of the fuselage or main body of an aircraft to the back end of the tail section. The length of an aircraft if, if you use I, if I define it very simply, it's the, the distance between the nose to the tail. The length of an aircraft is used to determine the length of, of an aircraft parking areas, hangars. In addition of for commercial service, the length of largest aircraft perform at least five departures per day determines the wide amount of aircraft rescue and firefighting equipment on the aircraft when it is fully extended upward in an open position. Here it is. This this we call nose. This is what we call tail. Right at this bob, this is the length of an aircraft. Now, also the height 
from the from the wheel to the top of the tail. The, the wheels in aircraft are known as gears. So those attached near the pilot or near the nose, we call this nose gear. And this is where this wheels are used for landing. So this is called main gear. 5% of the weight of an aircraft goes to the nose gear and 95% to the main gear. The distance between the nose gear and the main gear is known as a wheel. Then the wing span or we call a width of an aircraft is defined as a distance from the wing tip to the wing tip of the aircraft main wings. So this wing span of an aircraft is used to determine the width of an aircraft parking areas and gate spacing as well as determining the width and separation of runways and taxiways on the air. So do you can you can see what is a wings and from this distance to, to this distance. Also you can see this is a nose gear. These are landing gear. So and then the landing gear is the, the nearest is this landing gear. So this landing gear is known as outer main gear. So wing span, the maximum extent across the wings of an aircraft from this point to this point and outer main gear wheel span, the distance between the outside edges from this point to this point is known as OMG outer main gear. This is of Airbus 380. The larger the aircraft, the larger will be its width span. Now, when the maximum height of an aircraft, it's typically defined as the distance from the ground to the top of the aircraft tail section, as I've shown you in the figure. Only in rare cases is an aircraft maximum height found, found elsewhere on the aircraft. For example, the Airbus Beluga maximum height is noted as the distance from the ground to the top of the forward fuselage and floor. The wheel base is defined as the distance between the center of an aircraft main landing gear and the center of its nose gear in the case of a tail wheel aircraft. An aircraft wheel track is defined as the distance between the outer wheels of an aircraft main landing gear that I have shown you previously in the figure. Fair bus 380. This wheel base and wheel track of an aircraft determine its minimum turning radius, which in turn plays a large role in the design of taxiway, turnoffs, intersection and other areas on airfield which requires an aircraft to turn. So we continue with the parts of an aircraft. There is a very terminal, common terminology, what we call cockpit or flight deck. Front part of the fuselage, it contains all the instruments needed to fly the plane. The cockpits have hardened doors, securing them from unauthorized person during flight, takeoffs, and landing. Then there is a cabin. Section of the fuselage for passengers, cargo, or boat. A typical passenger's cabin has a galley for food preparation, lavatories, one or more sitting apartment, and etc. Then there is a cargo. Below the passenger deck, 
the cargoes and baggages are carried. So here is Boeing 747. This you will feel the different part of the wings just above this aileron and there is a flaps and there is a ruler. And then we call this elevator as well. You can see in this screenshot. So what does an aileron elevator and ruler do? Ailerons are horizontal surfaces located on wing tips provide roll control roll the aircraft either to the right or left then there is an elevator it is a horizontal surface located on the tail provide pitch control pitch control nosing the aircraft up and down then there is a ruder it's a vertical surface located on the tail, provides your control turning the aircraft either to the left or the right. Then there is an additional control surfaces. Here you can see this is a flaps. Then there is slats. What is a flap? A movable control surface on the aircraft wings used to change the amount of lift generated now if the flaps deflect downwards they are the plane is taking off and land and landing to increase lift so the flaps are always downward during takeoff and landing once the landing take place, the flaps are retracted immediately to its original position. So that it decreases the lift. Then there is a slaps, a movable control on aircraft wing used to change the amount of lift generated. Slats enable the aircraft, aircraft to get off the ground quickly and to land more slowly. Then there are spoilers located on the upper wing which open when opened decreases lift and increases strength. They reduce lift by disrupting the airflow over the top of the wing. They are used during the descent prior to landing and immediately after landing. So this is your spoiler. So let's look at it once again, just to have a quick review of what we have studied. So this portion is known as cockpit. We can also call it the command and control portion. Then obviously the body of an aircraft is fuse large, holding things together, carry payload and fuel. Then there are engines here. This the front part. This is a wing. So wing has many parts, right? Wing are for generating lift. So the front portion is what we call a slats, it's changed lifts. Between it, there is spoiler, it can change lift and drag, it can rotate the body. And at the rear side, there is an aileron, means change, roll, rotate body, and there there are flaps, it's change lift and drag. Now come to the tail. So tail, this this two part is what we call or a horizontal stabilizer controls the pitch. And 
on that part there is another part we call this an elevator then there is a vertical stabilizer so the tail has got two parts vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer in a vertical stabilizer there is a rudder that change yaw side to side when a plane is in, on air there are four air forces that act they are acted on it top force lift against the gravity and there is a thrust against the track so what is the thrust the force that moves the aircraft through the air and it is generated by the engine then there is a lift this force is generated by the flow of air around the airplane especially to the wing amount of lift generated depends on the air speed angle of attack airfoil shape they are dependent on different factors coefficient of lift it is defined experimentally and it is constant for any size wing with same airfoil it accounts for own unknown varies with the angle of attack there is an angle where the wing produces zero lift explain how and wing can fly upside down the third force is known as drag drag is the force of resistance of an aircraft feel as it moves through the air so in order aircraft to move forward it has to it has to be more than the track then wing is designed to be smooth in order to reduce track track important during landing in order to slow down the aircraft then there is a weight weight is the earth gravity pulls down an object and give them weight it includes the aircraft itself the payload and the fuel so here is the explanation of these four forces so it is the interplay between these four forces that results in airplane's motion so when an airplane is on the ground not moving there is not enough air flowing around it to create a lift so the thrust force is needed to get the airplane moving through the air thrust propels an object in a particular direction a jet engine generate thrust and because it is attached to the wing of an airplane its thrust will be applied to the airplane so as the engines thrust the airplanes in the direction they are pointed air is flowing over its wing the shape of the wing or more specifically the shape of an airfoil will have a direct influence on how the air moving from the front to the back of the wing airfoil shape is more curved than the bottom as the air flow travels faster on the top and slower down the wing so it is according to bernoulli's theorem an increase in velocity leads to decrease in pressure so that air pressure below the wing is higher while the air pressure above the wing is lower this difference in pressure pushes the wings up and as both wings are attached on the fuselage the whole airplane body goes up and if enough lift is generated when lift is greater than the plane weight the airplane will fly now the other force that is drag and it is any motion a movement by the airplane will actually be resisted by a drag force drag is the force that resists 
any object trying to move through a fluid. The direction of the drag force is opposite to the direction of flight. The thrust force is aligned to counter the drag force. Reducing the drag is one of the main concerns of aeronautical engineers when designing a So, when the forces are in balance, that is their magnitudes are same in terms of speed and direction will not change. Imagine an airplane flying along its cruising speed and its cruising altitude. The wings are creating enough lift to counteract the weight of the aircraft and keep at its cruising altitude. The engines are creating enough thrust to counteract the drag of an aircraft and keep it as a cruising speed. Now, let us say that the lift is increased on the weight of an aircraft is decreased. It's using up fuel, for instance. Now there is an imbalance between the lift force and the weight force and the airplane will ascend. Conversely, if the lift force is decreased, the airplane will descend. In the same way, if thrust force is increased, the airplane will increase in speeds in which the thrust is directed. Similarly, if the thrust is decreased, the drag increase, so the airplane speed will decrease. Thus the, thus the task of pilot is to manage, manage the balance between these force. We call this as a flying. So, to summarize it, airplane can fly because force acting on the plane thrust generated by the engine, lift forces produced by airflow, drag is air resistance and weight is a gravitational pull. You must be wondering why as an urban or civil engineer, we need so much detail of an aircraft. Because make your life simple, I can explain in this way, if these forces are known to us, we will be able to design the length of an aircraft, length of an air runway. And that's why we are very much considered how air plane fly, how it comes to stop, how much lift it will generate, how much, uh, how much flight can do, so all these factors are indirectly related to the design of a runway. Maybe this lecture in this transportation, we will not be discussing how these lengths are recommended, but it's, it's general knowledge for you. So if you take the advanced course in the airport, you will learn how to use these forces to generate to you know, design a runway. Let's look at the aircraft engine types. Reciprocating, the first one, then there is a turboprop and nowadays there is a turbojet. The term pistons applied to all Propeller driven aircraft powered by high octane ga gasoline fed reciprocating engines. Most small general aviation aircraft are powered by piston engines. The term turboprops refer to propeller driven aircraft powered by turbine engines. The turb turbofan is a reference to those aircraft which are not dependent on the propellers or for the thrust, but which obtain thrust directly from a turbine engine. Noise-wise, turbofan is less noisier 
than the first one propeller driven aircraft jet engines are powered by form of diesel known as jet a why historically jet engines have been used to power larger general aviation and commercial service aircraft jet engines recently have been increasingly produced for smaller regional jet commercial services and even smaller very light jet general aviation aircraft now then there is an landing here so this can be fixed in place that or retractable fix in a place that will be, it will be hanging off of the air, from the aircraft every time or like we see in all the commercial aircraft these these landing gears they go back to the place and this door is closed many small airplanes have fixed landing gear which increases drag but keeps the airplane light larger faster and more complex aircraft have retractable landing gears that can reduce weight most planes today as we call a tricycle landing gear arrangement this system has two main two large main gear units located near the middle of the plane and a single smaller nose gear located near the nose of an aircraft so it prevents the tendency for the aircraft to ground go so let's see the conventional naming convention of this wheel so what we got up here there is a single tire obviously single if you have two tires then we call dual three tires or triple and four tires we call quad now if if they are if single wheel are in one column in one you have one column and two rows that we call two singles in tandem and if has if it has one column and three rows then it is called three singles in tandem so like dual it has you know now two column and one row this is called dual here we have two column and two rows we call two dwells in tandem then we have two columns and three rows we call this as three dwells in tandem a triple has three column triple in tandem has three column but two rows and triples in tandems 3t three, three columns and three rows means nine rows so if we have four column and one row we call this quadruple and if we have four column in two rows then we call quadruples in tandem and similarly three quadruples in tandem when we have three rows now let's look the configuration of an aircraft this is this aircraft if we have all single wheel single wheel for nose gear and single wheel on the landing gear on each side of the landing gear it is called a single wheel aircraft if we have two columns we call this is a dual wheel and this is this is a nose gear and this is a landing gear then we have dual tandem aircraft in which we have dwells in the nose gear and tandem is at the landing gear then we have more like we have dual tire but then we have what we call tridem or we call this is 3d 
which dwell having two columns and three rows. And there is another configuration in which we have these tandems on the wings and then on the fuselage on the front at nose there are dwell wheels each side. And this another configuration of Airbus 340-600. So the life doesn't end here. Aircraft may have three, three rows of wheels. Front row, here, that is the nose wheels. Then there is a middle row and there is a rear. So look at this Airbus 380. More wheel we have, the more chances, more weight we will have on your pavement. So this is an Airbus 380 which nose gear is shown to. Then there is a landing example. We call each set of wheel as a bogey. So a Boeing 777 consists of two six wheel bogies. This is one set, this is one set we call so this six wheels and this six wheels. There is another example as well. So this this one is nose. This is two bogies consisting of four wheels each. And the huh? oh that looks like that. This is an, an Anton of AN225. It has got 14 wheel bogies. It has got central landing gears, consists of two 14 wheel bogies. So let's look at an aircraft weight. All aircrafts have a specified mass. This limit must be respected whether the aircraft is a micro light or a Boeing. Attempting to fly an overloaded or overweight aircraft can cause various effects. Aircraft weight is an important factor for determining the thickness of the pavement system, rigid and flexible for landing area that consists of runway, taxiway, turning area and airplane. To ensure aircraft can fly safely, there are limit that has been uh, set. There is a limit called M2, maximum take of weight. So this is the take weight that has been allowed to take off an aircraft. Every aircraft has its own maximum take of weight. This is a maximum landing weight. And there is a maximum zero float weight. So that is the weight above which there is a structural limit that an aircraft is certified to carry. Why? Why with that the limit? To avoid over stressing, to ensure aircraft structure is capable of of extending all the loads like the wheel post during its maneuvering by the pilot and gust experiences in turbulent atmospheric conditions. To ensure the aircraft is capable of climbing at an adequate gradient with all its engine operating and with one engine sometime inoperative. Components of an aircraft weight OEW operating empty weight, payload, zero fuel weight, maximum ramp weight, maximum takeoff weight, and maximum landing weight. OEW weight of an aircraft that includes the crew, crews, 
in all the necessary grade in ready flight, but it does not include payload. So the OEW is not a constant for aircraft passenger, but varies depending on the seating configuration. Payload is a term that refers to the total revenue producing load that includes passengers, males, and cargo. Theoretically, the maximum payload is the difference between the zero fuel weight and the operating empty weight. There are two, three types of fuels. Run-up fuels depends upon the travel distance and the queue time. Drift fuel depends on the range, speed, altitude, payload, and weather conditions. Reserve fuel it depends on distance to nearest airport amount of specified waiting time and the length of the trip. One gallon of jet fuel weighs 6.7 pounds. So fuel, fuel, we can say it is a flight fuel and a reserve fuel. Flight fuel is the weight required for and burnt during a flight. With the given flight distance, and mere as weight flight route can be calculated by fuel flow into flight time. And flight time is the distance divided by mean as weight. Then the zero fuel weight is the total weight of an airplane and all its content minus the total weight of the fuel on board. When airplane is being loaded through passengers, baggage and freight it is most important to show that the zero fuel weight does not exceed the maximum zero fuel weight. Designers of an airplane can optimize the MTOW, maximum take of weight, and prevent overlading in the fuselage by specifying a maximum zero fuel weight. This is usually done for large airplanes. Most airplanes, smaller airplanes, I mean, do not have a MZFW is specified among their limitations. So mathematically, zero fuel weight is an OEW plus payload. And when we say OEW, we means basic weight of an aircraft, crew members, gear assembly, and it varies with the sitting capacity. M tau maximum take of weight is the maximum weight that which the pilot of aircraft is allowed to attempt to take off. It is the heaviest weight which should be limited in order to ensure the aircraft can fly safely during takeoff. The M2 M tau of an aircraft is fixed. It does not vary with altitude or end temperature or air the length of the then this is usually done, the units are kilograms or pounds. Then there is a maximum structural takeoff weight, OEW, fuel, that means trip and reserve and the payload. Maximum landing weight, the maximum potential weight to conduct a landing. Which is the structural capability of an aircraft in landing. The mere gear is designed to absorb the dead in encountered during landing. Then there is a maximum ramp weight. It's a weight of air ground of ground maneuvering on the taxiing between the apron and the end of the runway, as limited by the aircraft strength and airworthiness as required. So as the aircraft taxis, it burns fuels and consequently closes weight. I can explain you very simply. When the aircraft is standing near the building and it's loading aircraft, it has been loaded with an extra fuel. And this fuel actually will be used when aircraft covers a distance from the terminal building to the point where it takes off. This fuel is burnt off. So that is so 
if if you look at this in this manner, yeah, you can say that maximum ramp weight of an aircraft is more than its maximum takeoff weight, simply because there is an additional fuel, and that fuel is supposed to get run out while that aircraft actually takes off from the ground. Okay, we we close this lecture seven here. Uh, and inshallah, in the next class, we will have the example. So much is the theory, and uh, I, I can understand this example will clear all the concepts if you have not understood the difference between uh, different categories of a aircraft weight. So that's it. Allah Hafiz, take care and wish you all the best.